Statistics are very important. They tell us the true nature of the problem we're dealing with. But statistics can be distorted. And I've seen a few examples in the last couple of weeks that I raised my eyebrows. Let's have a look at them. My first example actually goes back to 2010 when, uh, because it relates to the one that I saw this week. Back in 2010, the Women's Refuge put out an advertisement. Uh, it was a fundraiser and in it they made a very serious claim. Have a look at the uh, excerpt from the um, advertisement that was played. It affects the mind as well as the body. And one in three New Zealand women need your help. You can support them and help stop abuse before it starts. Um. So please give now. Because living in fear isn't living. So, I mean, that's a pretty serious claim, isn't it? One in three women live in fear. Is it correct? I mean, if it's correct, it's a terrible statistic. Uh, we know that we've got a problem with family violence, domestic violence. Uh, it's increasing with the increase of pornography and alcohol and drug abuse, which for some reason we don't seem willing to tackle. But yes, we have to tackle the family violence issue. So is this one in three correct? Well, interestingly enough, this advertisement uh, back in 2010 went to the Advertising Standards Authority and they actually came back and said, well, actually, no, it's, it's not correct. They said that the claims were exaggerated and they made this statement in their decision. They said, a study restricted to just women living in Waikato and Auckland uh, can't be used as a basis for national statistics. And similarly, it was concerned with the lifetime violence finding, which was based on an episode of violence. So it could be just a one-off example, could have been less of, lesser level violence. They did have two categories becoming the basis for fear. And in the majority view, it was inappropriate to extrapolate the claim, one in three women are living in fear from the research. Now, part of the problem with that is that it's a very important message, but it's getting lost because the statistics are being misrepresented. And therefore, when you doubt the credibility of the statistics, then you doubt the credibility of the whole message. Now, I actually saw another example just this week, and there was a release of a new program for sexual violence, family harm. And look, it's an, a really important issue because we have a major problem in New Zealand with the issue. Once again, I did a search uh, on the issues of pornography and the con contribution that is having to sexual violence couldn't find any mention of it. But this is what the uh, headline said, which concerned me. It said, one in three girls sexually abused before age 16. Well, that is a sobering stat. But I thought, is that correct? One in three girls are sexually abused before the age of 16. So I went to the source documents, Ministry of Justice. Well, they say that about one in 11 females, 15 to 19, are sexually assaulted in the previous 12 months. Uh, now that's, what, 9%? That's not one in three. Uh, and, but that is just in the previous 12 months. But they don't say in what setting. Is that a home setting? Uh, is it a, a bad date with a boyfriend? We don't know. I mean, they're all unacceptable, but we don't know that breakdown. Then you go to lifetime experience. This is in the same document. And it says almost one in five adults in the 15 to 19 age bracket have experienced assault at least once during their lives. Now that's almost one in five is almost 20%. That's nowhere near one in three. And in fact, if you go to this other study, Auckland University Youth 19 study, and this is four major studies, surveys of up to 8,000 um, high school kids throughout New Zealand, and they've done four of them since 2001. And as you can see there, females um, say that they are the victim 28, 26, went down to 19% and then 26. So once again, we are not getting to that level that they are talking about, which is the level of one in three. Interestingly enough, uh, in that Ministry of Justice data, I had a look at the relationship breakdown. And if you look at the marital status there, notice that of all the um, status of the relationship of people living together, 
that a woman is safest in a married relationship. And of course, you know, that's what they don't look at. Some of these red flag issues of drug and alcohol abuse, pornography contributing to uh, sexual assaults and harm, and family structure, and the role that marriage plays in lessening that. That's the safest place for a woman to be. It's the safest place for a child to be, and we have the reports to prove that. Just one other example that I saw a couple of weeks ago. The Statistics New Zealand, who uh, you would think would get their statistics dead on accurate, they put out a media release about the LGBT population. And this is uh, what it said. Uh, let me just go back to the right slide. It said this, one in 20 adults identify as LGBT. But then it says 4.2%. Now, for those of you who are mathematicians and with my limited statistical knowledge, one in 4.2% uh, is one in 23.8, which if you rounded it to the nearest whole would be one in 24. But Statistics New Zealand conveniently uh, rounded it down to one in 20, which kind of sounds better, doesn't it? And the media, of course, jumped on that particular statistic, one in 20, even though they were also repeating the 4.2% and they didn't sort of ask any questions. I went back to Statistics New Zealand and I actually said to them, uh, emailed them, and I, I just said, look, it, it says 4.2%. You've said 1 in 20. Isn't it more accurate for you to say 1 in 23.8 or 1 in 24 to be more accurate? Their response was, when presenting data, our standard approach is to round to a multiple, i.e. 1 in da -da. That is easily understandable to the general public. Well, I don't know about you, but 1 in 24 sounds pretty easily understandable. Maybe you should go to 1 in 25, just to be clearer. But to round down to 1 in 20 suggests that, uh, well, you can probably figure out what they are suggesting, that it's more prevalent than it actually is. And that goes back to my point. These are all very serious issues. Family harm, sexual violence is an issue that we have to tackle. But we have to be honest in presenting the scale of the problem. And we need to talk about some of the factors which nobody seems to want to talk about, which is the role of pornography and also, also the role of family structure. You know, when, when government data comes out and the statistics are misleading or wrong, then it, it affects the credibility of the rest of the important message. That's one thing we've been really careful with Family First um, documents that we've published and research is to make sure that the statistics are accurate. Because when they're not, when they're misrepresented, then you just destroy the credibility of your, the rest of your message. And when it's coming from government data, I think we should all be concerned. Mm -hmm.